Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is part 17 of the processing tutorial. In the last lesson, what we got running was this rather simple program that just draws two ellipses to the screen. So not, not really much to write home about. Uh, but we did create this class called Ant, which sets up some members, some things that we can use for Ant, the attributes of the Ant, so to speak. And then the constructor, which randomly assigns values to those attributes. We also have this p vector, which is an object. Uh, the speed is the object. The p vector is the class name. We declared this, but we haven't used it yet. And you may be wondering why I didn't use x delta and y delta like I did in the previous lesson, but it's going to become very apparent why in just a minute. Uh, so what are we going to do in this lesson? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to clean up some of this code. And by clean up, I mean we're going to move it inside of ant. And then we're going to create a method that makes the ants randomly move around the screen. And we're, we're not going to, we're not going to add too much except for that. I, I just want to make this a short lesson uh, because it does have some ideas in it that are a little bit, I don't know, it could be a little confusing. Uh, first thing though, I do want to mention for those of you that have programming experience or you've done something with object oriented programming in particular, these lessons that I'm going over are not meant as uh, any type of coverage of all the basics of, of object-oriented programming. In fact, in processing, even though it's based on Java, it's very difficult to do things like learn how to make private protected variables or create getters and setters. If I can't create private and protected, there's no point in creating really a getter or setter method. Uh, and I won't be talking about things like inheritance right away, or, and I won't be talking about encapsulation, obviously, if I can't do private and other types of uh, um, other other types of uh, variable uh, variables and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm really I'm really just focusing on the very basics of what a class and object is, how to use a class or an object, and just kind of have fun creating this game. Later on, I'll create some special lessons based around object-oriented programming and kind of some design techniques and different different types of uh, different types of, of ways object oriented programming is, is implemented actually in, in the real business world. But for now we're just kinda having fun. Alright, so if you didn't understand really what I'm talking about, that's okay. Uh, for those that do though, just keep that in mind. Uh, so now let's get on and actually let's make our ants move around. Uh, first thing I want to do is over here is I want to add a draw method here and I'm going to delete all of these even ant2. Then I'm going to take ant1 and I'm going to put ant1 up here so that it can be used inside of the draw method. And then I'm going to get rid of background in here I'm going to put it inside draw. And now we're ready to go. So Nothing special changed in here. In fact, I even got rid of some functionality. Not, there's no no circles or anything being drawn right now. So I've got this ant and I've just got a black background. All right, so let's actually make the ant responsible for drawing itself. What I would like to be able to do is something like this. I wanna say ant one and I wanna say draw the ant. So ant one, draw yourself, go and, and do things. And this is actually exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this dot operator to access a method that I will create. And this method's name will be draw ant. So I need to come in here and create it. Now, this method returns no value. And remember when we talked about methods early on, if you don't remember, go back and look at one of the first lessons that talks about what a method is and how it works. And this method returns no value, so it uses void. And it returns no value because it has no return statement right here. I don't say like return zero, and it brings back a number into here that I could print out. I could like do print and print out the number that this returned. It wasn't return a zero or maybe an 8.9 or something like that. But the thing I didn't talk about before really was that this doesn't have to be void. This could be float. And if this was float, then I could have a return statement that looks just like this. If I had this as an int, I would have to make this an integer. Maybe I make it eight and it would return an eight back 
to here where I called the method. So remember, this is calling the method. I'm saying ant object. I know that you have a method called draw ant that is attached to you. Can you please run that method? And ant one says, yeah, no problem. I will run that method and I will use my own personal set of these variables that the class, the blueprint gave me when I was initially created. And you can, it might do something with those in here. And we'll do that to draw them this time. So we're not gonna use anything that returns value, but we will later on. I just wanted you to know that you, that doesn't always have to be void. It can be anything. It could even be P vector. And it could return speed. Now just to blow your mind even more, it could even be ant. And I could return a new ant object. Weird, right? Okay, so don't worry about if you're not quite grasping any of these concepts. We'll come back later and we'll make some methods that return values and I'll talk about it kind of in a separate mini lesson uh, before I do that so you really understand how methods work. Okay, so let's make void draw int. And so this is an, a method that takes no values and draws no values, takes no parameters and returns no parameters. And we're going to use this to... Ah, draw our ant. So we draw X and we draw Y, we use body size and we use body size. And now when I run this program, it should draw and there it is, draw me a ellipse on the screen in a random location. So it's amazing. But it's still really lame because it doesn't actually move like an ant or do anything at all. So I'm going to make a second method now. And this is going to be called move ant. And move ant is also a void, so it doesn't take anything or return anything. But void is going to do all of the movement for our ant. And it needs to do it in kind of a, in a random way. We want an ant. So maybe let me pull up MS Paint here. So imagine the ant. Uh, this will be the path for my ant. Let me get take a brush, actually, make it a little bigger. We want the ant to kind of do something like this and then maybe all of a sudden decides to come over this way and start moving and this is kind of how the ant is going to move so how do you make something move like that well it, it's kind of difficult uh, we're not going to get this exact nice little curvy lines but we're going to get something pretty close and we're going to do it using randomness so what we want to say is well, let's, I'm just going to pick some values and then we'll tweak them later on to kind of get ourselves some more interesting movement. I'm going to say 90% of the time move straight ahead. So the ant's just going to keep moving straight ahead. And I'm going to say 8% of the time I want you to kind of waver back and forth which means the ant might go left, it might go right, it could go either direction. And ah, let's make this 7% of the time. And let's say 3% of the time, uh, make a uh, make a, a large waiver, we'll say. Uh, let's say, make a uh, larger movement, yeah, larger movement, left or right. And I'm going to change this to waiver right or left. That way we stick with all the right and left there. Okay, so 90% of the time the ant just keeps in the straight direction. And then 7% of the time it'll go left or it'll go right. 3% of the time it makes a big movement going left or right. Meaning it might turn completely 90 degrees or could even turn and kind of go back the way it came. So how do I simulate that? Well, the first thing I need to do is really just, I need to figure out how to get my ant moving straight ahead. Uh, so that's where speed comes in. And to make our speed, we just initialize the P vector. And if you remember, P vector has two members, an X dot X and dot Y. And I'm gonna randomly assign these some values. So I'm gonna give it one and one. I'm not doing negative three to three like I did last time because the balls move kind of fast and the ants aren't quite that fast. Okay, there's a better way of doing this and I will come back to it later, but I'm gonna use this to illustrate a point that sometimes you just wanna write the code in a way that's 
readable at first or just write it, get it done, and then you come back and you start kind of optimizing things and cutting parts out or, or making things, you know, uh, run faster. And right now we're just gonna, I'm gonna leave it like this, but I want you to know that these three lines can actually be written as one line. And I'll show it later. Okay, so let's make our ant move. And let's do the first part. Let's just make it move in a straight line. So I say x is equal to x. And last time we did x delta, but this time we have that all in encompassed in this speed. So I really just need to write instead speed.x and y is equal to y plus speed.x. And if I run this, it's still nothing moves. Because why? Well, move ant and draw ant aren't anything that processing knows about. Remember when we created the first methods and I said like set up and draw were built in and even mouse pressed and mouse click, they're all built into processing. These ones aren't built into processing. We made these, we gave them names, so we have to call them ourselves. We're responsible for them. So I'm going to move my ant in here because this method is inside the class, I don't have to put like ant one dot, I can just call it directly because they're all in the same scope here. All right, so move ant, we'll call this and it will move my ant and then it will draw my ant. So let's run this and there we go. Ant is moving and it's amazing. It moves in a straight line and it always moves in a straight line and then it goes off the screen. So it looks like we got two problems. One, the ant is not really wavering because we haven't given it that capability yet and it goes off the screen. Well, let's fix the first problem of it moving back and forth. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and put this at the bottom and then let's do our rotations up here. So how do I check if something 7% of the time is going to go left or right. How do I measure 7%? Well, I obviously need something that's going to come out of 100%. Maybe I have some way to randomly roll a dice 100 times or something like that and then tell me if, or randomly pick a number between 1 and 100 and tell me if I'm 7 or less, something like that. Well, here's how we do it. We're going to make two if statements, one for this and one for this. So the first one is just going to say if some number is less than 0 0.07. Okay? All right. So that looks good, right? So then I'm going to do my waiver, waiver around, left and right, waiver left and right. Where do I get this sum number from? Well, it's got to be a random number, and it's got to be out of 100 because 90% of the time it needs to go straight. So I'm going to say test the move. I'm just going to call it test move to test which move I'm making, and I'm going to use random. If you remember, random gives you a floating point number, and 0 to 1 is just like saying 100%. And if you've taken probability class, you'll really know that most of the time, you don't do probabilities as percent, you do them as decimals between 0 and 1. So 90% is really equal to 0. 90% is really equal to 0 0.9, and 7% is really equal to 0 0.07. Okay, so what I need is to test this. If it's less than 0 0.07, then I need to move it in a slight direction. So now comes the point where you see why I use speed as a p vector instead of using x delta and y delta. And if you come here, we're going to use this, and this rotate tells us that we can use anything using between 0 to 2 pi or any, any number really in there to rotate this, uh, this ant, or to rotate this vector in this case. So I'm just going to use speed.rotate, and I'm going to pick some low number. I'm going to say negative 0.1 to 0.1. I'm not going to talk about 
radians are how this rotate function functions on the inside. This rotate method works on the inside. I'm gonna just talk, I'm just gonna pick these numbers and you can play with it to get it to work correctly. All right, so we're going to rotate. Let's see. Oh, whoops. I don't want to rotate like that. What am I thinking? I want it to be a random number between. Sorry about that. So it should be a random in between z negative 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. So that makes a small movement left or right. All right, so if we run this, we notice now that this guy he just makes a slight little waver back and forth, not too much. If you up this to two, now let's up it to three. You're gonna see this is a little bit more prominent. And let's try to get one that's on the screen. There we go, oh, it's so slow right now. One more time, still so slow. All right, let's fix this a bit. Just for testing purposes, let's go ahead and make this X250 so he always starts in the middle of the screen. And let's make the speed always equal to 0 0.5 and this speed always equal to 0 0.5. And I'm just doing this now just so that we can get consistent information command. So there we go, there it is. Now if you notice, it's kind of moving up and down just a little bit. Oh, there it goes, a large stroke down. And so it does look like it's kind of moving back and forth. That's good, that's exactly what we wanted. Now if we want it to be move even more often, we can up this a little bit. So let's say less than 15, double it. Now you're gonna notice there's the movement all back and forth, back and forth. Oh, look at that, it's moving quite a bit now. It's even heading in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, right? Now, you can change these however you want. I'm gonna put this at one, that seems pretty good. And then I'm going to say if test move, we're gonna get the larger one here, is greater than 0 0.97 then I want to do a large rotation so speed rotate random and let's make this negative one and positive one and let's go there it goes there's my ant moving and it doesn't look half bad it actually seems to be moving kind of like an ant does it's moving around, it's kind of going straight most of the time, and then every once in a while it'll, it'll move off in a different direction. Okay, so this right here works pretty well. It does everything we need to. Uh, I, I chose these numbers for a reason. I have a 0 0.1, less than 0 0.1 is actually gonna make this not 10, it's gonna make it 10%, not one, uh, or not 7%, but 10%. And then I chose everything above this. And the reason I did that is so I didn't have to use an and statement. I just chose both ends of my random number. So anything over 0 0.97 gives it a bigger movement. Anything less than gives it a smaller movement. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. I encourage you to play with this code and try to get your ant moving in a way that works better for you. However you want the ant moving. If you can wanna take these off so it randomly starts, you can do that. I'm gonna do it at the start of the next lesson when we add a whole bunch of ants to the screen and then we also make sure that they don't leave the screen. All right, so look forward to seeing you next lesson and keep playing, keep coding, and I'll see you then.